I'm The Voice, and this is a BlockNet produced video on a BlockDX first time setup. The one thing you want to make sure you do is you have both your wallet pairs, or at least the BlockNet wallet and another pair wallet, um, open and synced at the same time. I feel this speeds up your first install process. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my two pairs that I'm going to be using on the exchange, and then I'm going to open up my BlockNet wallet and make sure those are all synced. Once you've got your wallets open, go ahead and open up a web browser. And then once your web browser is open, go ahead and go to the domain blocknet.co. Now, right there on the top right hand side of the site, you'll see there's a downloads link. And then you have a whole bunch of options for operating systems. We have Windows, Mac, Linux. If you really want to dig in, there's full setup guides and some videos. There's a bootstrap for the BlockNet wallet itself. Now I'm using Windows for this tutorial video, so I'm going to go ahead and select the Windows version of the BlockDX. Make this easy, I'm going to download it to my desktop. Go ahead and close this window. Let's move this over here. Now once I click this, go ahead and open it up if you get any Windows protected or Defender uh, has protected this install. Go ahead and improve those. Now we're installing. Once we're installed, it'll take a second and then it'll pop up with the license agreement. Go ahead and read through the license agreement. Click accept. There we go, and in a second it'll open up. And there we go. Now on a fresh setup, you have two choices, quick setup or expert setup. Now in this situation, I have a default install and some alternate install locations. So if you had all defaults, you would just click next on the quick, but I have expert, so I'm gonna click that. I have a couple of defaults, or one default, which is the block net. And then my other two wallets, I'm going to select down here is Digibyte. I have that in an alternate location. There we go. We're going to click Digibyte. And then I'm going to scroll down to my Litecoin, which is also in another location. Now, once you've selected all the wallets you're installing right now, click Continue. And then you can scroll down and make sure the wallet versions that you're configuring are correct. And then on this next screen, if you would have clicked the quick setup, these would be pre-filled. Now you can see my block net is in the default location, but my Digibyte in this case is in an alternate. So I'm gonna to browse to that location, which I have installed in my D drive under users app data for Windows. And I'm going to choose that default directory, the alternate directory now. And I'm going to do the same for my Litecoin wallet. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to let the block DX set up all of my configuration credentials. Now you could use the expert setup if you were an advanced user, but we're just gonna go ahead and bypass this and make it easy. We're gonna click continue. Now, if you're running a proof of stake wallet, staking will be disabled on all these configured wallets. It's not recommended while connected. It can really affect your ability to trade. So here's the one thing you need to know. Your wallets all need to be open while trading. Right now we're going to restart our wallets and we're gonna restart our BlockNet wallet to make sure that they're synced and of course then the BlockDX will be able to communicate with those wallets and then facilitate those trades. So let's go ahead and restart now that we're ready and let's go ahead and move this over and then we'll go ahead and restart all of our wallets. So let's go ahead and shut down our block net wallet. Shut down our Litecoin wallet. Close our Digibyte wallet. Now one right after another, we're gonna go ahead and restart. There goes our Digibyte. 
Next, we'll do our Litecoin. And now our BlockNet wallet. We're going to want to let those sync until they open up. And once they've synced and opened up, we're going to go ahead and click Restart on our Block DX. The other thing we want to do is make sure all of our wallets are all encrypted and unlocked. They need to be unlocked the entire time you're trading on the DX or have an active order. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Litecoin while these are other wallets are loading. I'm going to use wallet passphrase, my password, and then you can use uh, a series of nines. So like in this case, I'm going to use nine nines, which actually unlocks my wallet for about 31 years. You don't have to use such a large number, but my wallet passphrase, my password, nine, 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 nine. The response you'll get will usually be null, which means that's active and that worked. In the proof of stake wallet, we have it right out front where you'll enter your password and unlock. Just make sure you don't click unlock for staking. The Digibyte wallet, I'm going to go ahead and go to the debug console, go to the console itself, do the same thing I did in the other wallet, wallet passphrase, my password, then 9999999999, nine, 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 enter. And then in a second later, it got null. Same exact. So that means everything worked. If it didn't work, you would have had an error. So now that these are all unlocked, I'm going to go ahead and restart my block DX. Now, once this is started, you'll see the getting started screen. Now, what's really cool about this is that this is wallet to wallet. So it's super fast. And then it's atomic, so it's super secure and reliable. You're not at risk of anything. And very importantly, it is the most decentralized exchange. Now, one of the things you need to make sure you understand is that this is peer-to-peer. -peer. You need to have the wallets open, installed, synced, and configured, which we just did a couple of minutes ago. And the Block DX will communicate with them. If your balances aren't showing correctly and you have a proof of stake wallet, you may have received a stake and some of those funds are immature, throwing that balance off. In any of those wallets, proof of work or proof of stake, if you have them in a SegWit type address or a P2SH address, you need to send it to the legacy address and then refresh everything. Now, orders are full orders. So if you're looking for, um, I don't know, 100,000 digibyte, you need to place the order exactly for 100,000 digibyte. There is no partial orders. If you see an order available for that amount, you may take it. If you don't see it available, be the maker, not the taker, and then somebody can fill it for you. Again, wallets need to be unlocked. If you close the BlockNet wallet or close any other wallets, it will shut down your orders. Now, here's our list of wallets. There are hundreds. So hundreds times 100 is thousands of pairs. We're going to use the Digibyte and the Litecoin wallet here, and we're going to select that. Now, you'll see right off the bat here on the top left-hand side, there is all of our coins available here. And then we'll look over to the right, and we will see um, our orders as they're starting to fill. Now, this is Digibyte orders priced in Litecoin, and these will fill. So if I want to see this priced in uh, Digibyte, I can do so as these orders are filling. We'll go ahead and go up here and then uh, take a look and change it. So we just made this Litecoin to Digibyte, and now look, it's Digibyte price. So I can sell Litecoin for Digibyte. Or the other way, I can buy Digibyte with Litecoin. So depending on what you feel comfortable with, you can have it priced either way. I'm going to just reverse this back to where we first got started. And you can see here's the orders again. That's priced in Litecoin. And then how much Litecoin per Digibyte. And then there are total order. So let's go ahead and select this order here. Now, once we selected this order, we're going to go over to here and look at our Digibyte wallet and then input our Digibyte receiving address. So I'll go ahead and click down here in a second. But we also see our Litecoin address. We need some place to put our change. So let's go ahead and get our Digibyte address first. Just copy that over. And I'm going to paste that right in here. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and enter my change address from my Litecoin. And copy that, paste that in. Now all I need to do is just review my order, make sure it's what I want, and then click Accept Order. You can see my 0.57 Digibyte that I'm going to buy. My price per Digibyte or per Litecoin per Digibyte is 0 0.000137. And that's my total. I'm going to accept the order. Now, once I do that, I'm going to wait for the contract to confirm. And look, I've got three of five in my status. And the second this hits five, let's go ahead and look at our Digibyte wallet. Well, we got five. And take a look, there is my 0.57 Digibyte. So let's go ahead and shrink this down. Let's just recap here really quick. There's my active orders. That's going to move to my inactive orders and my trade history. This is the sell area. And this is where you can just buy right off, off the market here in the order book. But let's say I want to place an order. Now here's my buy. Let's click sell. And I'm going to buy some Digibyte. And we'll price that in Litecoin. So some of the things you need to know is you need to make sure you still have your addresses in there, your Digibyte address, your Litecoin address. And then what we'll do is we'll just go over here and we'll just price it at market right now. So I'll just go over here and select the current Litecoin price. We'll make it easy. We'll just go ahead and pick the 0 0.00136. And then uh, we'll make sure that we can see it's updated here, our dynamic pricing. We'll click sell Digibyte to make sure we do that. And then I'm going to change this. Let's make it easy so we can see our order. Remember, every order is individual. So I'm going to make this 200. You'll see the price is dynamically updated. And then I'm going to go ahead and click sell order. So place sell order, and that'll place it in the order book. Once that order is created, you'll see it pop up in the active orders. You'll see its status as it's submitting this to the decentralized order book. Once that's done, you'll see it pop right up in the order book area with a little asterisk next to it uh, that'll highlight your order. So let's go ahead and take a look in our orders area. And there it is. And that's all you need to do to both buy and sell on the Block DX. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions, of course, you can visit with us in Discord. You can also visit with us in Telegram. And of course, always on the website, www.blocknet.co.